Right, okay, so this is my Lancaster. As I say, plan of action is we're gonna go not quite as heavily weathered as this thing is, but we're gonna put on this fine stuff down in here, which I always use oils for. The great thing about using oils is at the end of the day, if it does go completely wrong, you can just wipe it all off and start again. So that's yeah. the nice thing to it. So, you know, if you used to be airbrushing this on, trying to get it off again is going to be a bit of a nightmare so again you can do it quite heavily like i did over here or you can keep it quite subtle as i did it on this side so it depends which way you want to go through with it so as i say i've been a real fan of oils for the last sort of four or five years now never used to I used to airbrush everything but uh, it's just a little bit safer so for this we've got the good old abtai lung 502s as well as i've got other ones as well just to show because we're not biased got the ak ones which i don't even get anymore but they're quite good uh, and everything so colors i tend to use all the time for this is neutral gray which is actually like light buff but it works great on gray and it works on green as well so that's quite nice and we got some shadow brown which i'm going to need some more of soon or what they call smoke uh so down here says abt 005 i think it is can i just say phil yes you know the color you need if you got it sepia Oh, right, okay. Seriously, it's, it, it's one of them sort of really dark, browny black. Yes. But it's a cracking colour, really good. So that's what you need. Cool, okie dokie. We'll, we'll, we'll get some of that as well. <laughs> I'm a bit limited. Yeah. I haven't got many of them, to be honest. Uh, the other things are X20 thinners, not X20A, X20. So this is literally acrylic, uh, sorry, enamel thinners. All right, your other option, of course, is you can go with like low odor thinners and all the rest of it. But to be honest, I always find X20 works really well. So I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, so, X20 comes with the blue lid. Yes, that's it. I have the lid. There's the lid. Blue lid. Hey, it'd be even more fantastic if we could stock it. All right, mm. sorry. Other ones are available. What have we got other ones? Well, yeah, try selling the Abteal Lung odorless thing. All oh, right. That. The last time I got one of those, yeah. bag, it came in a blooming jiffy bag with an hole in it. I don't know, I've made it here. But you can get them from certain sellers in the Far East on eBay. If you put um, an eBay alert on mm -hmm. for the Tamiya part, the Tamiya, what's the code on the bottle? Is it one one eight hundred and zero forty? I've put an eBay alert on. I'd say they seem to appear on eBay once every couple of months or so i get a notification that someone's got it all right so it is a bit of a bugger getting it but it can be done hmm. so what we're going to do is just going to take a little bit on the brush nothing over the top and we're just going to make up a simple little wash so we just pop it down in here and make sure you are completely mixed together so you don't want any lumps and bumps and anything else that or anything like that so what we tend to do is i have two puddles of enamel thinners just like this so this wash you want it to be we're going to over here about this it's quite thick because this will dry back quite a lot but also we're going to sort of blur it around a bit if that makes sense so we just go in with here so we're going to use this as our sort of mixing brush but as you can see it's about the consistency of i don't know semi skim milk <coughs> Excuse me. so that just goes down in there like that so remembering don't forget oils in any shape or form take forever to dry and enamels take quite a long time to dry as well so just be mindful of that when you're using and handling and all the rest of it you don't want to be putting your finger in it uh, and those types of things so you've got two ways of putting this on you can either come in basically with it neat and just blur it in so if i just show you on here where's my uh, magnifier so i can see okay i'll tell you what i'll put on my proper glasses so that way it won't have me magnifiers in the way shout if my head gets in the way <laughs> so i just want i just want to see any glasses put your screen on what i can't see <laughs> them the other way round. <laughs> what these just, ones yeah you look at him now yeah. he looks half intelligent <laughs> looks quite posh <laughs> <laughs> that's it these make me look intelligent so what we're going to do is going to take a little bit of oil we're not taking tons and then what we're going to do is this is where i get all messy doing this we're just going to almost dry brush it off a bit, but we're not taking it all off, but we want to take a little bit off. All right. So you just have it like this. And then what you can actually do is come along with the panel line and we're just going to lightly brush it along the panel line. So we're going to go through the decal to show it here. In fact, if I go for the closer one, you might be able to see a bit better. All right. So we're just going to come along here and we just, and it doesn't matter if you go too much or too little or anything else. We're just going to put it along. And you can come along like that 
And then what you can do is you can take another brush. So this is just a normal clean dry brush and we're going to go with the direction of the panel line and we're just going to blur it. So you just take that oil and you just literally work it along. And this is one of those things, it's nice and subtle, but it will leave a, uh, you know, a little bit of fogging behind as you make your way through. And over time, your brush will start to pick it up as well, just the edge of the brush you can see on there, and that will start to wear it in. So you can actually wear down certain areas. So this particular decal, we're just gonna go over it just to dirty it down again. And again, if you don't like it and it's not going right, you can use your finger, which is a great way just to bring it back a little bit, or you can just wipe it off and go through. So that's sort of one way of doing it and putting it all on. My preferred method, or the second method, I should say, of doing it, is you can just come along with your, your brush, okay? And then this has just got, uh, you know, a little bit of the wash that we made up before on here. And we can just start to work it along in the same fashion. So we're just gonna put it down and over all of this and you can just work it all the way around. So it's acting a bit like a pin wash system onto it. And then what we'll do is we will let this slightly dry back and it won't, it takes around about sort of five, 10 minutes to slightly dry back. And as it all starts to dry back, you can then blend and blur, blur it again and go through the sort of all the different areas with it. So we just come along and join up these areas. So again, you know when it is because it sort of transfers from being glossy as you look at it and looking wet to it just sort of fades back and gives you a satin look. So as soon as that starts to happen, then what you can do is then really come in with it and you just sort of buff it back again. So you use a clean brush and you're just gonna be brushing at it to make it come back uh, just like that. My preferred method though, the one that I use the third method of doing it this way, if we just move this down a little bit, is we just take some of the clean thinners that we got just down here at the side, if I go a bit bigger just to show you. So this is just clean thinners down in here, nothing on it at all. And then what we're going to do is wipe off pretty much all of it. So you've got nothing really on the brush, you've got very, very little. And then all we're gonna do is coat the entire wing area and don't forget this has got clay wash on here but as long as you don't mess around with it too much it should be absolutely fine and being obviously this is enamels the great thing to this is that it doesn't dry instantly it takes quite a bit to dry again so then what you can do is pick up that wash we had before make sure you always keep mixing it because it does separate then we just pick it up on the brush and then all we're going to do is we're going to start to wipe this down and in and we're just going to drag it literally around and what happens is it blurs and it fades and it sort of welts its way down and all the rest of it into all the areas and that's the thing because you've got the the actual uh wash in there you can go along and then you can actually just sort of tappy motions just to put it in quite thinly and then again you can go right the way over the the darker colors and then obviously you go over the lighter colors so forth and so on so we just pick up a little bit more and then again we're just going to bring it all the way down all the way here sorry that's hey. my other half saying she's probably at breakfast at work and then we're just going to come along with all of these just down in here and this works both directions like at the moment we're just using this for the the gray and the green using a dark color so this is going to cause shadowing around the panel line and in the area as well so we can just keep going along and again the clay wash which is under here shouldn't be affected at all it should literally just all go the sort of same but because you've got this the enamel thinners everywhere on this what will happen is, is that if you do overdo it, it just sort of blurs into each other. And you can just sort of go along and put all of this in. And if you wanted to, you could pick out the middles of panels as well. So if you wanted to make them a little bit, you know, if you've got a large panel area like in here, you can just sort of come along with it. And as this begins to dry back, what you can actually do is physically get amongst it and start to sort of stipple it and break it down and all these areas. And again, you don't have to do it with thinners. We'll do this area over here without thinners. 
just to show but I find with the thinners on it as well you just sort of get that nice sort of grimy look to it because it's sort of you can probably see it up here it's sort of bleaching into itself let me just pick up a little bit more and again it's just a case of coming down but I tend to do this sort of little stipply type effect with it just so it it just gives it that uneven non-uniform look to it because if you just brushed it on you're going to end up with lines and that's not what we want and then the great thing is because deep down this is just an oil under here we can blend we can maneuver it around we can change it Shit. or do anything to it viewers of the thursday night show will know that one oh <laughs> uh, yeah and again things like vortex generators here on top of the wings and things like that you can just you know basically come along with a little bit more and it'll cling around the the heads and the various things and again if you're using a wipe technique you can get the streaking effect from it as well so again we're just going to load up with a little bit of thinners on here and we'll just do down the back here but again you don't have to do this thing about pre-loading it you can just do it completely afterwards if you wanted to but i just think it gives a nicer type look <coughs> and it blends it a bit better phil what would you do to hide the whole wing to look like the spitfire sorry do what what would you um, how would you fade the whole wing? The question from Alan. You needed to fade the whole big area, I imagine. Again, you could obviously start off with, if you wanted to, is just do the entire area in a lighter paint colour when you're starting the paintwork. But if you were, like, down on here, as you'll see, it's quite a big area, and it's one of those things, you're looking at it close up. When you move further back, it sort of blends in and it sort of grinds in a little bit more. Um, but it is, it's this sort of situation where if you're doing something big, I will usually lighten the paint colour before I even start. And then when you're putting washes on, it darkens it a little bit. So you, you're on the right ballpark. But if you wanted to, you could do like a filter system of just coming up with, you know, uh, a little bit of lighter stuff, which we'll do in a minute anyway. I'll show you that because we're going to come amongst some of these bigger panels and things like that and with the greens and that with uh, some of the, the different shades and things. And there, uh, just have a look at chat a minute. Just to Adrian. Yeah, we'll do that, mate, no problem. Sorry, Phil, carry on. Right. <laughs> what does he want? This was well, just, in, just to combine them, that was all. Oh, right, okay. So thanks for the orders. Thank you, yeah, keep the orders coming. Yeah, thanks for all the orders that's coming in. It's, uh, there's a few. <laughs> So, I'll just charge you my uh, silent compressor up. That's <laughs> what the heating You're on. You muted, were you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll just put a little bit just round on these, and we'll just do a little bit down in here. And again, because the other ones are coming through quite nicely. So again. Drum to scrapers, Matt, we'll get them back in stock. We've got an order to go in with them soon, haven't we? So Yeah. Yeah, soon. We'll probably put an order in this week, but it takes a while. Probably a week or so to come through. Yeah. So But yeah, we've definitely got to put an order in, so they will be back in. Watch this space. Yes. Right. Okay. This is sort of working quite nicely now. So if we just zoom in again, you can see this section in here is drying. So what you can do is grab yourself a dry brush, clean brush. And I usually have quite an old nasty one for this. That the I know most of my brushes are nasty and that, but this is literally just for buffing. And then what you're going to do is avoid the ones that are wet down in here, but I'm sort of doing it all in once. And then what you're going to do is just going to come along and you're going to fade this in. So you're just going to give it a very light rub. And that will take out these bigger areas. And obviously I'm rubbing this way. So you've got that direction of airflow business. 
But again, if you come in too soon, what happens is this will happen, but you can drag it and you can come in with weathering and streaking and stuff like that, which always looks quite good. And again, but you want to keep the brush dry for just buffing it back. So you're just knocking back where it's a little bit sharp. So you can actually blend and it will stay and you just gently build this up. And what we do, we do the, the greeny bits in a minute with a little bit of uh, grey, which sounds counterintuitive to what you're doing. But again, over here, sorry, you can't quite see at the top, but over here you can see this. So what you can do is take that dry brush you've got and we're going to stipple. So this is, a, this is the other way. You can sort of stipple the areas to blend them in as well. So um, can I just quickly just jump in, Phil? Sorry. Yeah. Tony, can you just send a PM to Andy just to save that? Because by the time this is done, I'll have forgot and it'll probably end up going out. And also to Paul, does anybody know what Mark Spitfires are in that Eagle call boxing from Eddard? Find out. Nathan's going to be on there. Just, just chuck it in chat. And um, I think Tom was just asking about the Dazwork Stug again. Um, I've got to find out because we can only get Dazwork from one supplier. Um, so I'll need to find out for you next week. Again, Chukra's PM ever, so we don't forget. Apparently, it's a Mark VC okay, yeah. and a VB, Dirk's put. Two Mark 5s. So. Two Mark 5s, yeah. Nice. So, again, obviously, with that stug, I don't know if it's not available now because it's a Takum kit, isn't it? So I don't know if Takum is uh, just re-released it as one of their blitz kits i'm not 100 percent but we'll send an email over and find out next week okay right. sorry phil carry no, on no 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 it's fine so yeah <laughs> we're just literally just going around now and we're blending and we're doing all our bits so we've got all the the shadowy bits in if you like and again as these streaky ones we did dry we can just sort of blend them a little bit more and off of all these areas and you're just knocking back the the effect of it so you're blurring the lines between the the panel line wash which is obviously quite a strong finish because it's just in the panel lines to everywhere else now so that's those all in and then like all good magicians i should have here one i did earlier but i don't so we're gonna have to push through but we just get all of this on so we got some grime appearing now and everything else and then what you can start to do is rub in off on a paper towel take it any off and we can start to blend in areas which are too heavy so we're just coming in between these lines just a little bit down in here and we're just going to come off the middles just taking off these types of areas again and here on the back we're just going to brush to get the streakiness coming in because obviously we've got the speed brake so i'm imagining kicking up rubbish So we just go with direction of airflow and again we've got a little bit too much in there so we blend so the oils will release up if you find you get an area that's a little bit stiff then you can just get in there with a cotton bud with a little bit of thinners on it and away you go so that's sort of phase one of it and again okay so what we're going to do is now repeat that with the neutral gray just down in here and then this will act like a contrast to the other side as well so what we will do is we'll just grab a little bit of thinners over here and then we will grab our I can't remember which brush we even use for this uh, this one here so literally good old blob so we probably need a little bit more thinners than that but this is one of those areas where you can add, you can subtract, you can go back and forth all the time with this. It's not one of those ones where it's like a, you know, one and done and you're out the door with it. You're going to have to keep working at it. So sometimes you might notice that it's drying back really, really light and you want to add a little bit more depth to it, so forth and so on. So uh, definitely one of those areas where you know there's no right or wrong really to it it's just what your eye likes and how you're liking how it's turning out so again we're just going to grab a little bit of the the actual this is the light wash and we're just going to come along and to be honest got way too much on there and we're just going to pop it 
in the centers of these. So we're not going to go right up to the edge, but we're avoiding the panel lines because this is designed for the centers. Yeah, we're using these on the green, but technically you could use them absolutely anywhere. And all it'll do, it acts like a mini filter really at the end of the day. Oil paints are one of the most versatile products you can have in in your yes, definitely in your repertoire, shall mm -hmm. we say? Isn't yeah. it? It yeah. does do like you said, washers, filters. Oh, yeah, it's just wood. endless. To yeah. be honest, wood effects and everything. There's so much wood. wood effects with oils are so easy. Yeah. Do you know the razor saws that we sell? You know the CMK ones? Yeah. Which one's the finest? Is it the 004s? They, that's that. the one we sell an absolute load of, Ed, which I think I think that's the multi-pack where you get three different ones in it, I think. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head what the, what the things are. Because um, it goes off the teeth, Yeah, it's it? how many teeth per... Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. Like I, I don't know. Somebody will do a bit of research and tell you in a minute. I'm sure. So usual thing as I'm doing, I'm sort of just stippling it. Uh, really, it's just so it doesn't bulge or collect in one area, which is probably why I've got no decent brushes. Yeah. Them, um, the synthetic, I can't even say things, can't, so somebody say it for me. <laughs> synthetic brushes. That's the ones that are, that are the best for oil paints because oil paints can be a bit rough on your brushes and probably not best to use your best Kalinsky sables, shall we say. No. Um, and again, if you're scrubbing and rubbing around like what Phil's doing. Yeah. Then, you know, they ain't gonna last long, are they? No. You want a hard wearing brush. I've got that many mouths and tubs open at minute. Mm. So, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, and again, this that. is one of those areas where it's really, really safe to do this. I won't worry about it too much when you, you know, don't be thinking, oh, look, it's all going horrendously wrong and looking, you know, pretty grim and all the rest of it. Because it uh, goes through. But hopefully, you can see it just down in here. We've got the lighter one now going on. And it's just going to lighten everything up as we make our way round on this. So all we're doing is literally just grabbing a little bit on here for these grey areas, for the green areas, and the grey will just blend in all amongst it. But a bit like we do with the wash, you sort of, you know, if you've got too much in an area, just go back and grab it and use it somewhere else. But you just want to get that thin little coat on there, and it will stay, and it will stick. But the great thing is it won't matter too much if you're in other areas because you can use this over the greys as well and you the theoretically you could go around everywhere and stick it on the greys and everything but you just want more centers of panels with it as it goes in but with each coat you're sort of just bearing down weathering down so over here we've got quite a the large area back here on this sort of flapper rod so we're just gonna give it a bit down in there a little bit on this one here And again, this is just the neutral greys. But anywhere that's got big areas, it's nice just to break them up a little bit, just to give them a little bit more depth into your, your paintwork. And like we said before, paintwork is that thing. The more layers you have on it, the more depth you have on it, the more the eye has to move, the more you sort of trick the mind to thinking it's got more detail than it has. And again, same thing, if you find you've got an area and it's looking too dark, just put the grey wash around it and just rehydrate it and then take it back off again. 
So what we'll do is we'll just let that dry a bit. I'll move this out of the way and show the camera so you can see it a bit more. But hopefully you can see what we're sort of achieving here. You're breaking it down and blending it down. And when you look at the other side, so then hopefully if we go like this, you can start to see what we're achieving here. It's just subtle, you know, we're not trying to suddenly make this thing look horrendous because of the scale fact. If it's 30 second like we did on the spit, then yeah, you're going to be right on top of it. But we've got this thing about just trying to blend it together. And as it dries, catch it in the light, you can see where it's drying back. And again, we're going to come in and blend. We can then come in with neats just to add a little bit more detail here and there just to go through. But like this area down the back here, we've got a little bit of blob going on. We're just going to manoeuvre that round to go in. But, uh, you know, you can probably see it's quite strong down on this edge. And we're going to blend all of that around in a minute. But hopefully you can see on the close-up, obviously that's what we've got there versus normal. That's it, normal. This is what we've got going on. But again, from three feet away, you can't really see it. And then we'll just blend all this back together. Then we're going to come in with a little bit more shading work to really sort of bring it to life. So yes, we'll just wait for a few moments just for that to dry back a little bit. So uh, right, I just finished off this bit here. So hopefully you guys can now see the how we've faded in the green now. So the green's got this slightly weathered hue into it absolutely everywhere. And you can see this is how we sort of bleach back. So of course, if you wanted to, you could go in there and you know lighten up your paintwork and do post shading, but you can do it with oils. And as we said before, you could wipe all of this off at any time. So this is a bit just down in here. So what we tend to do is, as I say, nice clean brush, and then you can literally work at it. So you can either sort of re-speckle it a little bit. So you just sort of come in and you can sort of jab at it and all the rest, or you can just literally brush it just to sort of fade it back just a little bit so you know you're not trying to wipe it all away you're just trying to encourage it to blend and then again you can just sort of come in with these areas and you just fade back that sort of speckling that you've done to it all so it all just sort of fades in a little bit and again if it's too strong you can just keep rubbing at it and it will give but another little technique is get your finger in there you can actually blend it with your finger which is one of my sort of favorite ways of doing it just to get it going and that's all faded back now so you've got that contrast and then you can just flip back if you wanted to as we were saying before you can literally pick up a little bit of neat oils so we've just got a little bit on a brush here if we do one area and i'll carry on off camera and then what you can do with it neat because in the panel line it will still be slightly wet you can add a little bit more depth and things down in here so we're just going to pop along like this like we showed you with the first time just to add a little bit more so maybe you want to add it on the green or maybe you want to add it all right the way over it's personal choice but you can sort of come along with all of these and we're just going to pop it in to be honest this is a wet bit just down in here you can probably see it and then in and then obviously we're going to take a little bit off the back of the controls and we're just going to put a little bit just in, in these if i do this quarter and hopefully you guys can keep up with it and then again i think oils are a better way of post shading yeah than with an airbrush i think you've got more control yeah well I think if it goes more, wrong you've got a safety with it. net yeah it's a lot less risky it's slower but if you go like they go wrong you can wipe it off yeah do it with an airbrush you're stuck yeah It's fun. Very therapeutic. Hey, I hope Sean knows we can all lip read. <laughs> ah, it's all right. They can't see. Yeah, you think you're on camera. <laughs> ah. yeah, Will can't see. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. Sorry, Now James has just put here, a good friend who passed away 20 years ago was a tail gunner in a Lancaster. After the war, he was a stand up comedian and he's honed his art by using it to deal with the fear. 
It was the way crews would take their minds off the reality of sitting in the pitch black, anticipating an attack at any moment from a night fighter, not to mention the cold and the flak. <coughs> I'll tell you what, that's got to be the worst one, isn't it? Being a tail gunner on a lank. I'm your own at the back, aren't you? Crikey, you're on your own back there, aren't you? It's a long way back. Mm. Yeah. I, mean, I just don't know how they did it. I really don't. So, right, here we go. So you're doing something like that. Hopefully you can see that sort of fading that we're achieving. Obviously I've still got to do that centre bit by the engine. So it's really this section here as how we've done it as compared to obviously that's it normally and that's what we've just achieved down in there so again when you go for the three foot rule you know and again you can make it as strong or as weak as you want to do it that's the whole point spitfire did quite strong because it's in a, a larger scale but the technique is exactly the same right the way through so obviously you'll just carry that right the way over to the other side but hopefully you can sort of see the differences and again with oils it's this thing it's a bit difficult because you're large but as you maneuver it round, you get the, the shininess of it still so you've still got that sort of glossiness coming through and all the grime and that so the grime is your texture you want your texture to stay but just remember it will take forever to dry it takes days and days and days for this to actually properly dry off so forth and so on but there we go that's how i use oils and do my weathering so yes, in another show I'll do the other half, clearly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, get yeah, some I don't know how it appears on there now. You sort of get you that. Tell. You can, because it looks like it's got a filter over the... Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can tell the difference. My left yes. wing, if that makes sense. Because you can tell it's dark, the grey's a mm -hmm. different hue, shall we say, to the other side. So Yeah, yeah that's it. But again, it's, it's one of those ones where it's very difficult for cameras to pick up. A lot of the time, like to me, to be honest, it looks like I've overdone it. But on there, I'm looking what you guys can see and it looks like it's nothing really there. But as I'm looking at it here thinking that needs rubbing back a little bit, it's a little bit strong at the moment. But uh, yes, good job. <laughs>